Let's solve a puzzle today, shall we? Look at this picture carefully. What do you see? This picture actually created quite a lot of flutter one month back when it was excavated from the Ram Janma Bhumi in Ayodhya. You see the picture carefully, you'll notice that there are lotuses engraved on that stone slab and the stone slab had three concentric circles. The largest circle has uh, 29 petals, the middle circle has 13 petals and the smallest circle has 7 petals. So the question is, how do you think the circles could have been divided into 29, 13 and 7 equal parts when actually 29, 13 and 7 are prime numbers? Prime numbers are not divisible by any other number except 1 and the number itself, right? So how do you think 800 years back this marvel was done? So if you know the answer, then you needn't watch the video. But if you want to know the answer, then please stick with me because we are going to solve this question as well as discuss many other important points. Hello everybody, welcome back to Zesty Nimbu, this is Shreerekha. My mission through this YouTube channel is to talk about Indian culture, talk about Indian stories, satellite stories as I call them from Ramayana, Mahabharata, the Puranas etc. So that the next generation, the younger generation will get interested in our Sanatan Dharma and its values. If you find this cause worthy, show your support by subscribing and also sharing the videos. Now let's go into our video. Before that, I wanted to tell you the answer to the question I had asked in the previous video. The question was, who were the two people who didn't participate in the Mahabharata war? The answer is Rukmi and Balrama. Stay with me till the end because I have another question coming up and also we are going to solve the question that I had asked. So the answer to this puzzle lies in our Indian mathematics and in particular, the Sulava Sutras. All that you require to solve this puzzle is a rope, a peg, I don't have a peg so this is a pen and a chalk or a pen to mark. I'll show you how to solve this puzzle but before that I just wanted to tell you something about the Sulabha Sutras. Sulabha Sutras are actually considered appendices to the Vedas. These Sulabha Sutras came into existence more than 2500 years ago. They are actually used to design and construct the Yagna Kunda or the fire altar or the Vedic altar. The fire altar or the Vedic altar is constructed very precisely and in which the, the homam or the agnyas are done. This is based on the Vedic chanting. The Vedic hymns are recited and the puja or the yagna is done. But for the construction of the Vedic altar, there was a precision which was required which was provided by the Sulabha Sutras. The four most important Sulabha Sutras were contributed by Bodhayana in 800 BCE. The second most important one was by Apasthamba in 600 BC. The remaining lesser known Sulabha Sutras were by Manava in 750 BCE and by Katyayana in 200 BCE. The Sulabha Sutras were used because it was believed that if the precision was not there in the construction of the fire altars, then the gods would not be pleased and bless the people who were performing the Yagnas. And hence the Sulabha Sutras were used to construct them very precisely. Now let's see how to solve this puzzle. So there's a person called Mr. James Crabtree who had actually answered this question. If you see the picture here, he says that he has used Sulabha Sutras to actually solve this puzzle. And this puzzle is nothing when you compare with the kind of work that our mathematicians had done years ago. And this, this is a very trivial thing when you use Sulabha Sutras properly. How do you solve this puzzle? Well, you take a circ circle of any circumference and then you tie a thread or rope around that circle, the circumference of the circle and then make it straight. Now you can see that red thread. So the red rope has the circumference of the circle. Now he has taken a black thread or black rope with 19 markings or 19 equal divisions. You can take any number. You can take 1 cm, 1.5 cm, whatever be the number and the 19 markings. He has used 19 scale. You can use 29, 13, 7, anything. On the black rope, he has uh, used 19 markings and then he has connected the end of the red rope to the black rope with a green rope. Now, he has drawn 19 parallel lines to the green rope and each of the 19 markings has been done on the red rope as well. So that red rope will again be going around the circle, the original circle from which the circumference was taken 
and the circle will have the 19 markings and it will be very easy now to divide the circle from the center of the circle you can draw lines like cycle spokes and then you can divide the circle into 19 equal parts and that is how it is so simple to solve this tricky puzzle using syllabus sutras they have made our life very simple isn't it now if you think of our ancestors like Aryabhatta, Brahmagupta, Bhaskara, Srinivas Ramanujam you'll see that we have solved lots of such puzzles in the universe but unfortunately these have not been credited to our mathematicians the Pythagoras theorem was not actually invented or discovered by Pythagoras it was actually discovered by Bodhayana so I'll post all the links in uh, the description so Mr. Crabtree has used the Syllabus Sutras to solve this puzzle. He is actually a math researcher from Australia and um, he, he teaches elementary level mathematics to students, kids and he is extremely influenced by Indian mathematics. I will post all the links related to him on, in the description box so you can go and check it as well. Have you heard of Edward de Bono who has spoken about lateral thinking? If you haven't, I'll post the link in the description box. You can go ahead and check it out. Now, he says that lateral thinking is very important. And if you think, our ancestors had a lot of lateral thinking. That is why they could solve these kinds of math problems so simply. Now, the Western mindset is very fixed. They don't use the rope method. They always use the compass and the lines and the set squares, etc. But if you have to solve these kind of problems, the compass and the set squares will not solve this problem because they are fixed, right? The thread is movable. It can be moved around and you can solve these kind of puzzles. So it's very important that we teach a younger generation about all these beautiful things. We should make math very easy for our kids. It's unfortunate that our uh, education system doesn't support these things. But I strongly recommend that you teach the kids the Vedic mathematics or you can go ahead and check out Mr. James Crabtree's uh, links. They are very enlightening actually. Question for the day. Who is the mathematician who got the Fields Prize and who is an Indian origin person? That person has actually credited his grandfather's Sanskrit uh, texts for him to get interested in mathematics and you know solve math puzzles. So if you know the person's name, put it in the comment section. I'll let you know the answer in the next video. Fields medal is actually equivalent to Nobel of Mathematics. Did you check my other videos on uh, Indian culture, satellite stories? I'll post the link above as well as in the description box. Please go ahead and check them out as well. I hope you have liked today's video. Do like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel. Press the bell icon for more video updates. And don't forget to like my Facebook page and tag me with the hashtag Hinduism stories at Zesty Nimbu on Twitter and Instagram. Please check out my other videos and until the next video, see you.